Hi, I'm Dennis Phillips, and welcome to Everyday Reloading and Shooting. All right, I recently shot this target and on this I'm comparing the 73 ELD and the 73 grain boat tail target bullet from Berger and we're using Varget powder shooting 223 and uh, this I'm measuring the velocity and on the 73 grain ELD we had an extreme spread of 69.7 and a standard deviation of 21.5 and for the burger, we had an extreme spread of 83 and a half and a standard deviation of 24.7. And one of my viewers commented that I needed to get those numbers down and suggested that having a different brass would probably do the job. And I don't have any doubt that if I had something like Lapua or Alfie Munitions, that it would probably be a better quality brass but I'm not a PRS shooter yet, so I don't want to spend that kind of money. I have also purchased some Hornady and some Winchester, which was LC brass, and I've fired those and I've saved those, and I keep those uh, sorted separately. But out of some range pickup that I've done, I've had Federal Cartridge, NATO, Winchester Military Ammunition, and Frontier. And so what I have done is I have loaded five rounds each with a 52 grain Hornady boat tail hollow point bullet using H335 powder at 24 and a half grains, which is their max load, which should produce 3,200 feet per second in velocity, uh, according to the book. And we're going to measure these with the Garmin Zero C1 Pro chronograph. I'm primarily interested in looking at the difference in the velocity, the average speed, the extreme spread, and the standard deviation between these six cases. So we will shoot these and come back to you with the results. Okay, welcome back to the channel. Once again, we're at the Georgia Gun Club's 100-yard indoor rifle range, and I'm shooting my Tika T3X chambered in 223 Remington. We're going to be looking at whether or not the cartridge case makes a difference in velocity. On one of my previous videos, I was chronographing the rounds, and there was a pretty good discrepancy in some of the velocity. You know, I save what I shoot at the range, like I shoot some Hornady and I shoot some Winchester, and I save that brass and reload that, and I can keep those separated by head stamp. But uh, I've had, I have some range pickup that I've just picked up around. And one of the best loads that I had was a 52 grain boat tail hollow point shooting H335 powder at 25.4 grains, which should give us about 3,200 feet per second velocity according to the book. But we are going to measure these with the Garmin Zero C1 Pro chronograph. And we'll be shooting five shots each of Lake City 223, Hornady 223, Federal Cartridge 223, NATO, that's uh, Lake City 556, Winchester Military Ammo in 556, and Frontier in 556. So we'll shoot five shots with the same bullet, the same charge weight loaded, but we'll be shooting five shots with each of those cases, and we'll be measuring the velocity for each group and see how they compare. I'm, and I'm not so much shooting for accuracy, I expect this will be a good load. And I won't just intentionally be sloppy. I might kind of rush through it some to, to, because we're looking at the velocity here, not how well they shoot. And I know this round performs well. And we may see a few good groups here. We may see some crappy ones. But the main thing we're looking for here is to see how the case affects velocity. All right, so stay tuned. As always, you can enjoy the music while I fast forward through my shooting or you can skip forward to the results that follow, shooting at 100 yards.
right, I think these were all over the place, but somewhere around 3,000 to 3,100. But I won't know what the average velocity and the standard deviation looks like on these until we get home. All right, let's take a look. Now again, I wasn't shooting so much for accuracy as I was just to test the different rounds. Some of these were reloaded prior to the head spacing problems that I was having. Uh, there's a video, there's a link to that video below. And look at that primer. Well, that thing is really flat there. I don't see any ejector marks, but these were at the top of their charge weight. And this was obviously a, uh, a round that had been undersized and it just got stretched in the wrong place. And it's actually cracking. It's about to break. All right, let's, let's take a look at the target. None of these are what I would consider excellent groups. The Hornady actually looked like it probably grouped the best with a flyer here. Not sure what happened there. These were all loaded the same way. Same bullet, same charge weight. Kind of scattered, scattered, kind of scattered. This one we've got a good four out of five. That's the Hornady brass. The, but uh, again, we're checking velocity here, not so much as performance. So we'll get back to you here in just a second. All right, before I get into the targets and the results, I wanted you to take a look at some of this brass. These cases on the left, you can see the primers are somewhat starting to flatten out a little, like here and here. But the ones on the right, over here, that's how a normal primer should look. This one's starting to be a little flattened out. But this is normal, and this is a Frontier case, and right next to it is another Frontier case, and up here is another Frontier case. Look at the difference between these two. That's a normal primer on the right. You can see the rounded edge of the primer where it seats into the primer pocket. But the one on the left is completely flattened out, and it's even got a larger diameter. It's completely filled that space. And that's an indication of high pressure. Although, you also on this one, here's another indication. You see this crack that's forming right here? That case is already cracking. And there was one other as well. Here's a second one. I will also add that these that both cracked were both frontier. And like I mentioned, I had three or four failures to fire where I had to do a bolt lift on a round that had already been chambered in order to get it to fire. And that's an indication of too much headspace. And that can also account for these bullets stretching. So this is, except for the Lake City and the Hornady brass, this is all range pickup. It's just been sorted by head stamp. So I'm going to toss this and let it go because I don't really use this anyway. But uh, let's go on and take a look at the targets and see how we did there. All right, so I'm back from the range. And as you know, I'm looking at different brass cases to see if there's a variation in the velocity. And I found out that, yes, there is. And so I'm looking at Lake City Hornady Federal Cartridge. Lake City NATO 556, Winchester Military Ammo 556, and Frontier 556. And I've loaded all of these with H335 powder using a Hornady 52 grain boat tail hollow point bullet. These are supposed to be rated at 3,200 feet per second. We didn't quite get there. The closest we got was an average of 3,174, uh, which isn't half bad. So these are still traveling pretty good. So uh, we're going to take a look at each one of these cases to see how they performed. Um, and I wasn't primarily shooting groups here. I was mostly concerned with velocity, but I did make somewhat of an effort to try to be accurate as much as possible. Also, these are from a uh, batch of mixed breasts that I had. I was able to separate five of each of these. 
uh, for this trial. Now I'm only shooting primarily LC and Hornady. Uh, the other is just plinking ammo, which I don't really do much of. So that's pretty much just sitting there. Um, but anyway, looking at these, the LC and the Hornady perform best in terms of velocity. And I'll show you a screenshot from the Garmin app showing the average velocity, extreme spread, and standard deviation. And I've also placed this on the target, which I'll show you a close-up of as well. Okay, first up is Lake City. This was the best performing, although it only had an average velocity of 3,100 feet per second uh, for the five rounds. It was the slowest of all, but it was also the cold barrel shot, so it seems like they began to speed up somewhat um, as the barrel got warmer, and you'll see that in a second. But it had an extreme spread of 38 feet per second and a standard deviation of 12.8 and the group size was 1.4 inches but if you look at the best four out of five that's at 0.79. Hornady performed pretty well too. Uh, they had an average velocity of 3,115 feet per second with an extreme spread of 44 and a standard deviation of 14.7 so also uh, really good by comparison to some of these others. It shot a group size of 1.29 and you see clustered right around the point of aim are four shots at 0.79 inches. So shot very similarly uh, to the LC brass. Moving on to the Federal cartridge, that had my worst extreme spread, although the rounds are starting to speed up here. Now, what happened on Federal and NATO is I didn't reset the chronograph after I shot the first five here, so I actually shot 10. And here's the average for both the Federal cartridge and the NATO average together. Now, I wasn't able to separate those out, except that I was able to go in and delete the NATO charges, or I could have deleted the Federal and kept NATO, but I deleted the NATO and I kept the Federal uh, statistics. And the Federal cartridge shot 3141 average foot per second. So the barrel's warming up, the velocity speeding up. An extreme spread of 126 and a standard deviation of 44.9. Compare that to 14.7 and 12.8. That's really getting up there. Okay, and then if you look at the Federal and NATO together, I don't have separate statistics for NATO, but I can tell you that they were pretty close to Federal because the average on both of these, the average velocity was 3155 versus 3141 for Federal, so NATO must have been traveling a little bit faster. The extreme spread for both was 139 and a half inches, and it was 126 over here for Federal, so it must have been a little bit higher for NATO to bring that up. And then the standard deviation for both was 44. Over here it was 44.9. So the NATO cartridge is going to be about the same. For the, for the Winchester military ammunition, also known as White My, uh, we had a 3,174 feet per second average velocity. So it is speeding up. It's gone from 31 to 3115, to 3141, 3155, now 3174, and that's about where it's going to top out. Uh, but you have an extreme spread of 94.8 and a standard deviation of 34. It shot a group of 1.69, so not performing that well. And then the Frontier. Uh, had an average velocity of 3168, so pretty close to that 3174, but an extreme spread of 107.6 and a standard deviation of 35.6. So just looking at the standard deviations, we go 12.8, 14.7, 44.9, 44, 34, and 35.6. So it looks like the LC and the Hornady that I'm currently loading with are giving me the best results here. So the range pickup, I would say that's probably a good reason to avoid pickup brass at the range. If you're using mixed brass, you're going to get mixed results.
Now, I'm sure that if I was using something like Lapua Brass or Alpha, something that's high dollar, I'm probably going to get even better results than this. But I'm pretty pleased with 12.8 and 14.7. All right, so these are my results. I hope you find this information helpful. If you have any ideas, thoughts, suggestions, questions, please leave those in the comments section below. I hope you will also like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.